Hello. Hello, everyone. All right. Let me share my screen and we will get started. Cool. Awesome. So what we're going to do today is I am going to do my damnedest to build a custom image for deployment to Packet. Now, if you're not familiar with what Packet is, that's fine. We are going to quickly deploy a vanilla server using one of the already supported distributions um, and just take a look at the flow of how that works. Um, we're going to use the UI today rather than any sort of automation just to keep this relatively quick so that we can go on to the watching me potentially fail miserably to build my own custom image. Mm. Uh, now, what I'm starting with today is what we'd say in Scotland is hee-haw. Uh, so nothing, nada, zilch. Um, and we're just going to work our way through this custom image doc and see if we can first and kind of take the Debian 10 image, uh, make a couple of tweaks to it, and then push that up to GitLab, and then try and deploy that onto Packet. Uh, and assuming that works, I want to try something a little bit more adventurous, which is to actually try and add a new distribution. Um, I'm a kind of a an Arch Linux fan, and I think it would be really cool if I were able to deploy Arch Linux onto a packet machine. So let's first just start by kind of covering what packet is. So Packet is a compute provider or a cloud provider, depending on how you want to look at it, in that you can provision your own infrastructure, you know, one machine, 10 machines, 100 machines, and multiple data centers and regions around the world so that you can deploy your application in an elastic manner. What's different from Packet from other cloud providers is that there is no virtualization whatsoever. There's a lot of really cool automation going on, but no virtualization. And that just means that you're working with the bare metal machine. It's no different to having a you know 16 year rack and your own data center somewhere running your deploying your own software to it. So it's a really cool way of being able to get a little bit more bang for your buck rather than being surrounded by noisy neighbors and virtualization and paying the small performance hit that you would get in other cloud providers. So I can come in here and just click give me a new server. I'm going to spin something up on demand. Uh, and these are the regions that we have available in Packet. There's you know, a good few there. I'm going to go with Amsterdam since that's closest to me. And we will spin up a C1 small. Uh, so you can kind of see the specs here. Now this C1 small has actually got you know 32 gig of RAM on it. So. <laughs> Not that small, really. Uh, and then we have our images. So for today, let's spin up Debian 10, or at least for just now, I should say. Uh, and I'm just going to call this Debian 10 demo. Uh, we can provide user data, which is a, you know, a script that would be executed when the machine has been provisioned, and I could install little bits of software there, you know, something like an app get update and app install. Yes, Nginx would give me an Nginx server. But we're only spinning this up as a demo, and we're going to use the custom image build to provide the software that we need. The reason I want to try and do the custom image thing is also I want to be able to play with it and understand how it works and, and get good at providing these sorts of images. But because the speed of deployment will be substantially faster if I can remove a certain level of the provisioning step that would have to happen after the machine had booted. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Salt Stack, and that's a great system. But if I could have my machine already kind of ready to run Salt on first boot instead of me having to get it up to up to speed then that's going to be much faster for my elasticity and scale and all these other challenges that we may have. Uh, I'm not going to configure the IP and I'm not going to configure the SSH access either. That will all use my, my account's SSH key. So I should still be able to SSH onto the machine. 
Uh, cool. So that's going to take, uh, depends on the availability and Debian 10. I don't think I've actually spun that up before. I do believe it's one of the faster operating systems to provision. So let's just say five minutes and we'll maybe come back to that and see how we're getting on. So with regards to custom images, uh, I've kind of skimmed this document. I mean, as, as more sensible person <laughs> may have tried this before streaming, um, but I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, learn more in public and, you know, make mistakes so other people can see that too. You know, there's a lot of value uh, in seeing trials and tribulations of things that go wrong. Um, and then, you know, anyone that doesn't want to persevere or however long this takes me, we will condense this down to smaller formats, which was feedback I got on Twitter. Thank you. So what do I need to do? I need get LFS. So do we have get LFS? We do not. Let's try and install it. So I don't know if that works. I'm just, I'm just guessing. Uh, what is get LFS? Well, this I do know. Uh, I have used this before. So if you've ever been in a position, if well, if you're using Git, right, you may have been in a position where you've actually added a really large file to your repository. And because of how Git works, even if you delete that file from the repository, it still existed at a point in time, which means the size of your repository will always be cumulative to all of the files that you've ever added. Um, you know, people always add large images that haven't been compressed for the web, or they add PDFs, or worse, they add zips, etc. Now, nobody wants a large Git repository because it means that cloning it can take a lot of time. Obviously, there are other loopholes there. You can do shallow clones, etc. But really, Git is not that great at storing binary blobs. And by binary, I mean those zip files and images. And custom images is definitely going to fit that there because the custom images we're going to be building today, I'm assuming, are tar zips. So what LFS does is it actually creates a really small file inside of the Git tree, which is a pointer to an external resource. So when I add these images to Git, it's going to say, hey, you've added this image, which lives on GitLab or GitHub over here on this special LFS store. And we can reference that image. And if we ever change it, a new version will be uploaded and the SHA will be updated in the reference. So it's kind of like a pointer to a file elsewhere, but still with the same semantics and make sure the file hasn't changed. So uh, we have this now, perfect. Now it wants me to grab get Ubuntu image. So let's go and see what that is. Uh, this is on GitHub. Packet host, packet images. So packet, oh, first one, perfect. I did peek at this when I was doing my research, my very, very brief research. Um, but I don't think I clicked on any of the scripts. So get Ubuntu image. <laughs> okay, so it works out which arch architecture, not arch distro. It allows us to specify a version of Ubuntu that we want to fetch. And, ah, okay. This is just a helper script that actually downloads <laughs> uh, the Ubuntu base ISO or base image from the Ubuntu website. Cool, okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get it if it's going to make my life a little bit easier today. So let's do curl. Uh, oh, get Ubuntu image. All right, let's make that a bit bigger. All right, next. So it also make that executable. Yeah, that would make sense. And packet save to image. Let's just see what that is too. So this, ah, okay. So this takes a Docker image tarball and explodes it into a root file system. 
Cool. That makes sense. Let's download it. Da, da, da. Bet you never thought you'd be sitting watching me download some images. Oops. And I'm assuming we're going to want to make that beautiful. <laughs> Next. See, yeah, that is easy. Uh, all right. So this is the NRD system for Ubuntu uh, 16.04C1 small. Okay. Uh, lot to unpack there. So Linux systems have a kernel and our NRD, which is a RAM disk image, which is loaded prior to the kernel that provides, uh, you know, the drivers that your machine needs for the kernel to start, like, you know, decrypting the disk, mounting the disk, etc. So I guess that's going to be quite specific to the C1 small. So I'm going to have to make sure I download the right and an RD for the machine that we want to spin up. A kernel and the modules, so the modules will be specific to the C1 small too. So those two, we need to make sure we get the correct one. In fact, I guess they're all going to be specific, but not specific to the Ubuntu. I'm not sure why that's part of it. Uh, but we'll grab the ones that we want to modify and we will Maybe try and break it afterwards. Let's get it working first. So those were branches. See, this is packet host, packet images, raw, and then this is a branch name. So if I confirm that, yeah. Oh, Ooh, wrong scroll. Oh yeah, there we go, cool. Oh, it looks like there's generic ones as well. That threw me. Uh, Debian 10, what machine did I spin up here? Oh, my machine's ready, so that's good. Uh, yeah, C1 small, so let's stick with C1 smalls. And we have uh, two different timestamped ones. So this one is the latter. So let's download these. So. I don't think it told me to download an image. Yeah, let's just get the kernel. Uh, mine doesn't have a Docker file. Yeah, be fine. Let's download it in RD. Uh, can I not just, there we go. Save. And kernel. And modules. It's not really confirmed that people can even hear or see me. Let's just do that. Oh, we have comments too. Uh, all right. Yeah, so a smarter person who is streaming would have, let me just switch back to myself for a moment. Uh, a smarter person that would be streaming would not have this view up and shared at the moment, but uh, my MacBook Pro isn't compatible with my monitor and I'm currently waiting on my external monitor and I'm currently waiting on Apple engineering to fix that for me. So uh, yeah, you're just gonna have to see everything as I do it. So I will pop back to the questions randomly. So what is salt stack was a question uh, by Steve. Um, so SaltStack is a provisioning system, much like a Chef, Ansible, if you're familiar with them, or Puppet. Um, I'm particularly fond of Salt because it has a few traits that the other systems don't have. Um, the first one, which I think is the most important, is just the communication method. And that Salt is uh, event-driven and communicates over zero MQ, and the communication is entirely one way. That means that all of your worker nodes or Salt calls on minions only have to be able to speak to the, the master node. That's it. So the, the, when it comes to my networking, security, and ports, really, really simple. As long as your minion and worker can reach the master, the system just works. 
What happens is the salt master will post a message onto zero MQ, which will be picked up by one or more worker minions. They will execute a task and then they will publish a message back on the queue, which the master will pick up and say, hey, this was done and this wasn't done. Um, and it's super, super fast. Um, that method of working is insane. Unlike Ansible, which I believe the SSH is the default transport, which means you have to have all of these SSH ports open between all of your machines. And I'm a bit of an advocate for never having SSH on any machine in production ever. And this is a jump box or a bastion host. Uh, so uh, Rick is saying he likes to see me fumble. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's a really good way to learn as well. I think seeing people make mistakes means that you don't have to make that mistake too. Seeing something that's polished is nice if I want to do a 30 minute tutorial or learning thing, but it's nice to, nice to see mistakes happen too. And we'll just share that because that's an awesome me heart. Thank you. All right. Uh, so like Terraform then? No, Terraform is for provisioning uh, resources rather than operating systems. Although SaltStack can also do infrastructure provisioning through something called Salt Cloud, and Ansible actually has something for doing that too. So it gets a little bit murky in the way that you're going to talk about them. So I guess the answer is yes and no. Uh, maybe we can do a deeper dive into that at another point. Uh, yeah, how did you get the question on the screen? Uh, so I'm using StreamYard.com, uh, which actually has, in fact, if I share my screen again in a second, you'll see it. But I can actually see all the questions from the three different platforms I'm streaming to. So I'm streaming to YouTube, Periscope, slash Twitter, and Twitch. And it allows me just to click show. So let me, I know you've got the infinite void right now, but I can click show. And it's cool. I like it. If only I had a second monitor so that we didn't have to look at the infinite void. So let's go back to Firefox. Right. So I did download all those files, right? So in theory, we have our NRD, our kernel, and our modules. Nice. All right. So what are we going to build? That's a good question. Uh, so we're going to do a Debian 10 variant, and we will to something relatively trivial just now. Let's just try and see if we can get it um, pre-provisioned or bootstrapped with Nginx. And I'm going to move these GZs into that folder. I will make this repo public as well, um, and hopefully <laughs> with more useful images. Like right now, kind of what I'm thinking about is, as I learn how to do this, is that we can try to provide custom images that anyone can use for a variety of use cases. One of them, which seems really obvious to me, is A, providing a Docker Swarm setup or a Kubernetes setup or a HashiCorp Nomad setup um, to allow people to take advantage of container technologies on top of the bare metal compute. Right? There's a, almost like a just container technologies are great because we can you know hook into the kernel without the virtualization aspect. So the bare metal just gives you that extra bang for your buck as well. Uh, right, docs. Just mumbling now. Right, I don't have a Docker file, uh, so let's go see what this is doing, and then maybe hack our own together. Uh, all right, cool. There's nothing Ubuntu specific there, other than all the app stuff, and I'm using Debian. So other than a few package checkups, I don't see any problems. So from scratch, the special thing in Docker, let's see if I can get this right. Um, it means that you want a container image with nothing zilch to nada. Um, really good, well not good, actually it's really painful. Because <laughs> what a lot of people do is, because Go and Rust and all these other compiled languages have the ability to provide a static binary with no dependencies, is they generally copy that binary, this, and then you have an entry point, which is just binary, and then they ship it to production. Uh, it's really cool in that your image is gonna be super teeny, you know, the size of your binary, so I'm assuming a few hundred kilobytes, maybe a few meg at worst case, 
Uh, the problem with that is you have absolutely no way to debug that container. Um, you cannot get into the container because there's no there's no bash. <laughs> there's no there's no new core tells or GNU core utils. Uh, there's no observability into that system unless your application itself exposes its metrics. So it can be a black box depending on what you're you're doing. Uh, now Kubernetes is trying to make this a lot better. I think. It was pushed from the 119 release, but the 120 release will have the concept of a debug container or debug. Uh, yeah, it's a container. Yeah. So you can do kubectl debug and it'll actually inject a sidecar into the pod, which gives you bash and other debugging utils so that you can take advantage of the small binary size of a scratch image. Um, but that's really early stuff. So let's not focus on that. We don't have a root FS yet. I'm assuming our packet safe to image is, or image to whatever it was is going to provide that based on the modules, the NRD and the kernel. Uh, maintainer is an old flag, shouldn't be used anymore. Uh, and the labels, I'm going to assume these aren't particularly important, but on the off chance that the the packet subsystems are going to use them, then we will call this. Uh, I had a space on it, so let's just go for that. Uh, I will be the vendor, sure. MIP is the only license. And yeah, I'm not going to bother changing the build date. I don't think that's going to be important. Although, then I doubt myself. So, can you believe it's August already? Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, uh, oh, six. All right. So Debian front end non interactive. Yep, I prefer that syntax. Uh, uh, we're doing an update, which I would always recommend. You want to keep your thing secure. You want to make sure you're always getting security patches. Um, we're doing an upgrade. Nice. And then we're doing an install. And we have bash, bash completion. All right, uh, that's weird. I assume that's a, an artifact of copy and paste, but there's definitely no need to run that update twice. So let's just remove that. Um, and that's installing kernel and depths. Cool. Here's the locales. Yeah, that is, you know, pretty standard client bootstrapping stuff. Uh, and then it's doing a clean. And uh, because these are all multiple layers, where image is still going to be relatively large, but then I don't know what save to image is doing. So maybe it flattens it. Um, but there's a good chance this is a little bit redundant. But there's also a better chance that I'm wrong. So let's test this. This is Docker, right? The BB. I can test that this works by changing it from scratch to be Debian 10 and doing a build. And if any of it fails, it's going to be because these package names are different from Ubuntu to Debian, and we can fix that. So let's uh, go to Debian. I put Debian. I think what we want is that. Uh, do, 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 do we have a 10? We do. Nice. So let's do a build. Our directory, docker, image build, and let's just call this uh, Debian 10 engine X. And go. And start docker. I'll just take a moment. So let's jump back over here. See if we have any more questions. StreamYard love, awesome. And some Ansible stuff. All right, cool. Nothing I need to get involved with yet. So we spun up the server. Uh, it didn't take very long. In fact, before I even got through kind of my preamble about what we were doing, it was kind of ready, which is nice. Uh, Docker has started, so let's actually so I'm getting used to this Mac keyboard. Let's run that Docker build again and then spin up a new tab and SSH onto this machine and tap the UB key. Oh, lock the UB key. 
All right. Uh, now on a bare metal Debian 10 Ryzen cloud supercomputer. But you could get a RAM and it's a small. That's to me is just phenomenal. Uh, let's install Nginx. This is kind of what we're going to try and, uh, you know, provide like a golden image, although it's not very golden, where we have Nginx pre baked so that we can skip the few minutes. Obviously, it's a few seconds because we're not doing anything uh, grand or elaborate yet. Uh, and I'm assuming System B may have started that. Yep. Uh, local host, nice. And -da. so this is what we want to accomplish with our custom image. Let's close that. Uh, oh, we're already hitting the errors. Okay, so what is BIOS dev name on Debian? What I'll do is so that we don't have to watch me change 54 package names potentially is I will spin this box back up first. I'll try and fix a few of them. And if it's just getting too cumbersome, I will retreat on using Debian 10. Or we can always go look in the GitHub repository for the Debian 10 Docker file, which could work. Um, or we'll just use Ubuntu. So BIOS, dead name. BIOS. Da, da, da. Let's try and just regex it a little bit. Starts with BIOS. All right, when in doubt, BIOS dev name Debian. No, Suzy, Suza has it, Ubuntu has it. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. This person seems to know what they're talking about. And it's a Cloudflare site. We wait. I wonder if it just exists. So, we not. All right, that plan's going to shit already. So, uh, let's just try and cut it out first. See how many of these we're dealing with, and then Make an executive decision. <laughs> Should have prepared some jokes. Open this means it's installing things, although it says reading package list. So, oh, come on. One minute, and we haven't installed a package yet. All right, let's go and see if we can find a Docker file for one of these Debian 10s before I start reinventing the wheel. Uh, what would that mean if three of them don't have a Docker file? I guess. Ubuntu. Uh, scroll. Scroll. You will do. So that has a Docker file. Uh, 
maybe the Debian images aren't built with a Docker file, and instead everything happens in the image tar GZ. Maybe this comes down to the way uh, those images are provided. Because if we take a look at that helper script, oh, what happened there? Uh, run C did not terminate successfully, unable to locate a bunch of packages. Yeah, so we'll probably just use Ubuntu and tweak it rather than Debian 10. Uh, which means we can put that back in. Uh, let's run Ubuntu. Uh, I think I got this from a 1604 repository. Uh, just let's call it the right name. Okay, let's leave that running. So this does pull an actual base image rather than like an ISO installer, which I thought was cool when I seen that at the start. I wonder if the reason the Debian one doesn't exist is because they take a different approach to the bootstrapper installation stage. I mean, this is a base system that I'm just tweaking with some app get updates and installs, whereas the Debian one is probably an actual installer <laughs> that has to uh, be run somewhere. I'm not sure. I will find out, but not going to focus on it now. So we're less than a minute in. I can see packages being installed. That's looking a bit better. But it does mean, does mean uh, the images I downloaded are currently incorrect. So uh, 1604, uh, C1, small. I wonder why that one's not got a timestamp. Uh, which one's the latest? Six three. All right, that'll do. So same as last time. Let's download the artifacts. Uh, in it, kernel. Oh, this. I don't really like talking to myself. I should have someone come on and join me. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Right. So give them a moment to download. Give this Docker image a moment. I mean, I'm expecting this to work. This is the Docker file that we grabbed from the repository. If it fails, I'd be uh, confused. Uh, so I don't expect that to fail, but I also have no idea how long it's going to take. Let's take a quick peek at it again. Uh, it's not a lot. My internet is decent enough. So let's just see. What can we do just now? Da -da -da. Check questions. Someone asked me cool questions. Who has 20 servers? Did I, oh, did I miss something? <laughs> ah, Rick says, I installed Ansible, got my homeland 20 ish. So you got 20 servers in your homeland? I hope they're all pies and not actual servers. Where would you put them? <laughs> uh, yes. So you're saying, I hope Salt or some derivative in the future, when it's more mature, will give me a viable alternative. Yeah, Salt is old. Uh, I think I started using Salt in 2015, 2014. It's been around a few years longer than that. Um, and while I would say it's mature, they also move that project really fast. Like, there's a lot of breaking changes, so you really got to kind of keep up with that one. All right, let's just share a screen again. And what can we do? Let's go back to our documentation. So assuming we test the Docker file, which they don't even want us to do, but you know, I'm going to do it anyway, uh, we can begin to build a custom image. So I am welcome, thank you, to add or remove packages as I see fit. 
And in this example, we have added an additional run command to prove that our example worked. Okay. So this downloads the image. So we still need to do that, right? We've not done that yet. Uh, so let's, it takes two parameters, three parameters. Ah, cool. It ran. So let's tweak our image first then. Oh, no, we can't because we still need root. And we want scratch. Okay. Now we're back to where we should be. Let's add on the package that we want. I want. Uh, we'll just, uh, before I invalidate the cache, let's make sure. Those are all pretty quick steps. That is not going to take long. So I don't mind invalidating the cache to here. What I could do is jump down here and add it here, which would keep the cache complete and it would only run my instruction. But because of that clean step, I would have to do the app update again, which is, you know, <laughs> nobody cares, but uh, there's just no point. And I can just add it there and sacrifice a, a few seconds either way for that to run. In fact, I probably spent more time talking about a trivial situation than I have. And then it would have been just to run it. So we're going to add Nginx. Uh, Systemd will, as we've seen on the live machine, Systemd enables and started that service for us. So uh, that's a nice thing about this. Even if that runs in a Docker container there, there wouldn't be Systemd. But because it's going to end up on a real machine, Hopefully it just works. Okay. So go here. Call our get adventure image. Paste those arguments we copied. So 1604. Uh, the correct architecture. And the dot is, I'm assuming, where to download it to. Uh, I don't have GPG. Well, we can fix that. Maybe, so yeah, there we go. So I'm assuming, again, I'm sure we could pop open that, let's get Ubuntu image script. It's just going to verify the signature on the download. Make sure it's not been hijacked by nefarious hackers. I'm not doubting whether nefarious is a word. <laughs> Live streaming does funny things to your head. Kind of like the word friend. Have you ever read it and typed it so many times that it doesn't have any meaning anymore? I did that yesterday. Random segue. I find that with most words with IE in it. The more you type it and read it, it just kind of loses all meaning. It doesn't look real. There you go. Wonderful news while I wait. So let's try again. Launch D. I'll assume that's a Mac thing. Ugh. It wouldn't bother me so much if Brew wasn't so slow. So we're getting used to this whole Mac thing. I am an Arch Linux user on pretty much every other machine and just type in Pac Man or yeah. It's just super fast. All right, so it fetched the keys. Uh, <laughs> these were not on the requirements list. Ah, uh, right. So let's go here. Chat two, five, six. Uh, let me just type that. Is it? No. <laughs> I thought it changed my search. Right, okay. Uh, so someone has asked this before. And the package we need. Core utils. We should have done that.
Okay, let's try one more time. Cool. So what did we get? Um, we got Ubuntu based, 16.04 based Tarzip, and it has created a symlink called rootfs. Cool. Let's move the sim link, the image. Let's move the shaz in case it does any sort of verification into our Debian directory, uh, which means this is now satisfied. Um, cool. Close all that down. Uh, maybe I do. All right, we're good. Uh, okay. next we will get there. So now we can build our image. Oh, well, let's do Ubuntu Nginx and go. Oh, wrong directory. Nice. Let's give that a minute. So once that finishes building, we're going to save the image as a tar and then use our packet data image to do something. Um, so it seems to be just reading in the tar and giving us a different tar. So let's just see if we can work this out. So what does it do? Uh, so it needs, <laughs> that's a weird way to check for three binaries, <laughs> but I guess it works. Uh, C, does that work in a Mac? I'm sure it does. Uh, so we need tar, JQ and make temp. Uh, I'm pretty positive I have them anyway. Uh, make temp is a great command actually. I have an alias kind of to PMP, which is a magic function. See these into the make temp. I do that whenever I want to remove my bash history from like a live stream or something because my bash history is per directory. Okay. Nice. Uh, okay. What does it do next? So it is, so it goes, to, yeah. So the Docker image format works. And that if I were to manually extract this, after we do the Docker save, if I were to manually extract that, we would actually get then a different, I can't remember if it's just directories or if it's different tar zips for each layer which can then be exploded and mounted as an overlay. Uh, so what does overlay mean? I think we've got a few minutes, so I'm just going to use my temp alias. Let's do make one, I forget, yeah, forget the commands here. Uh, what we have is two directories. Uh, oh, it doesn't show files. Right, main fail. Two directories, each with its own file. Now, what an overlay would allow me to do is do match t overlay uh, one, two, three. No, nope. maybe that's a max thing actually. Well, no, I did try. Let's do run rm ip alpine 3 max thing I could just be I've forgotten the command, but before I look it up, we will test. So make one, two, three, touch one, one, two, two, overlay uh, one, two, three. I am root. <laughs> All right. 
Ads overlay Linux. Dash T overlay. Uh, okay, so the options are lower there, upper there, and work there. Anyway, it makes sense when you see it. How are you supposed to remember that crap? Um, let's try it on the Mac first then. So we're back to here. Our loader is uh, current directory one. Uh, I hadn't started this now. Uh, working directory, I don't think it's important, and then merge it to three. All right, we will try one more time in the container. And done with this demo. It's too adventurous. I don't know why I made that two commands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's try a break glass button. Last time, promise. Uh, invalid argument. Uh, ah, screw it. What would happen? Uh, is you'd be able to type ls3 and I would actually see files one and two because it would overlay them together and merge lead them until they can mesh. So you get a single unified view of multiple directories. It's actually a really cool feature when you remember how it works. Cool, image built. Uh, okay, next. So yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. So when you explode a tarzip from a Docker image, you get all those layers as their own tarzip files, I think it is, which can then each be extracted into their own directory. And what Docker does is provide a uh, overlay of all of those directories for a single unified view. Um, and the working directories for the, the copy on write stuff, but we can cover that in another session. So this extracts all of those images. And just creates a new image. That's it. So it, it's just, <laughs> it's just, Getting all the layers, merging them together, and creating a single image. Right, right. nothing fancy. Cool. So let's quickly pop over. All right, cool. If you have questions on that image stuff, let me know. So let's save our image. So we called it Ubuntu Nginx. And I would just save that as the exact same. I don't think it should take too long. Give me a moment. And then what we want to do is run our packet save to image, passing in through standard in that tar, and then the exploded version to image.tar.gz. Then what do we do? Then dun, 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 we can delete all that stuff, and then we commit it to get and push it. OK. So what do we want to do? Uh, let's bring in that packet script first. So we're going to run packets at the image. Standard in is that. And uh, we'll call this packet Ubuntu. And it does gzip it. So let's do that. Ah, not Mac friendly. Let's fix that. I'm not Mac friendly either. That's okay. Uh, so it doesn't like this flag, which I don't believe um, is important. I removed you. two of them. Right. Oh, 
Oh, does that expect this to run on Linux? Why is it? Why is it creating devices? Ah, Houston, we've had a problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, what can we do? Let's cheat. So we're now getting into, I have no idea what I'm kidding, maybe you will want to be doing, but I'm going to try and get around this maxing by using a container. Uh, Let's use Ubuntu 1604 since that's what we've used for everything so far. We're going to mount in this directory to code and set the working directory to code. And I want to run bash. And I need to tell it to run a container. We'll try and run the packet save to image thing from here. See what happens. So, uh, why is that failed? Uh, let's just echo that command. Looks fine. Oh, wait, I can't find. Ah. I wish it has to come after all the parameters, and I definitely know that. Uh, code, packet, images, Debian. Use the wrong button. What's oh, Mac? Okay, I've been to. So this. May or may not work. Um, input Ubuntu output packet Ubuntu. Now I don't have all the requirements. It is probably not going to exist in Ubuntu 16, and I'll be pleasantly surprised if it does. Yay! About as excited as I get, by the way. Working. <laughs> uh, Docker, you are a wonderful thing sometimes. So. Hopefully this won't take too long. It's probably going to take longer than it would have if I was on native Linux because we are going through an annoying uh, clone of a file system or sync of the file system. I can't remember what Mac OS is using and Docker are using. Um, I just remember it being painfully slow when working with interpreting languages like Python and PHP. So that's me a little bit longer than I would have expected. Right, let's see what's next. So we delete all the crud and then we're doing the LFS. So uh, it wants me to store, we didn't create a get attributes. Um, but the, oh, the fact this LFS track will create the get attributes. So I won't have to do that manually. Then we push all of that, and then what do we do? So then to deploy our custom image, we use a special version of the user data to tell it to pull it. Cool. And that's it. Well, fingers crossed. So let's drop it this. Now let's do uh, get LFS track start dot. Oh, I 
can just uh, I'm just going to track one fail. Is there a packet one? Oh, let's fix that. I did see I was starting from nothing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's track that. That should create the get attributes. Perfect. Uh, I'm not going to delete stuff. I'm just going to add the files that I think it wanted me to add. Uh -huh. I don't want, no, I don't want the shadow. It's the only wanted attributes on the Docker file. Yep, we've got that. And Cool. And um, what do I do next? That I can handle. Uh, commit. So let's call this feature Ubuntu image with engine X. Uh, this the repository doesn't exist. Packet images. Not important. Uh, okay. Get remote add origin. Uh, I'm going to get past. Like it, get an initial. Branch based. That's the thing now. Uh, get at uh, LFS track Debian packet Ubuntu. Uh, I want to move that get attributes actually. I only want it to be inside of that directory. And then get add Debian here, Debian Docker file. Oh. Should have went inside the directory. Why am I not? Oh no. Uh, get in it. So I only tracked the packet one, but I actually want to track those uh, other ones too. I'm just having a major fail. Okay. Let's go in here. Yeah. Track. There's a reason they use star dot tars up, but I don't want to delete all of my tars ups. Okay, so we're gonna track this one, this one, this one, this one. I also want to add the Docker file and cool. Uh, do I need to add those separately? I hope I'm doing the right thing here. Yeah, you can still add them even though we've got the attributes. Cool. It will do the right thing, I'm sure. So, uh, Emmet, Kernel, Debian, Module, Debian. Kernel modules in it and pack it. Oh, be nice to me. Commit. Yeah, push. Origin latest. Update refs. Uh, get remote add origin. Push YubiKey. Push YubiKey. <laughs> Wait. I mean, I think it's pushing my YubiKeys. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this is quickish. I 
was hoping I would keep this under an hour, and we're close, but we are at the hour. Yep. So when this goes up, we should be able to refresh this. It's not quite there yet. And deploy like so. Oh, I really should have shut it down. Bye bye. Sure, the case doesn't matter, but you know, I asked for it with a capital D, so okay. So, Amsterdam, uh, see one small custom. No, nope, that's custom pixie. Uh, does it matter? Does it say? Uh, yeah, so I think I just pick Ubuntu, but then use my own flavor. So let's call this Ubuntu Nginx. Add the user data that it expects. And point it to the correct repository. So gitlab.com. Ah, it was in a subdirectory. <laughs> Sugar, how do I make that work? There's a reason these are all branches in a root directory, right? Hmm. Dress. So this is just using code config images. I mean, is this a standardized thing? Uh, config. I just go to Google, get results that actually make sense. Uh, hmm, let's not fight with this. Let's wait for this to finish, create a branch, I'll move the files to the root. Let's just push it and test it. <laughs> and then I'll work out if I can use a directory approach later. Uh, huh, yeah, I never really thought of that. Oh. It's uploaded 350 meg. Hopefully not a lot to go. Package images. Uh, let's go into Debian 10. So 390, and those are all pretty small. So it shouldn't have much more to go. Not sure why it's larger than 450 so far. Oh, the modules are actually quite big. All right, okay. Come on, computer. So what I'm going to do is switch a C into and an X, move my attributes. Uh, let's just go inside that directory. With the attributes, the init, the modules, the kernel, and the packet image of a directory. Let's uh, get add those files again. And Uh, commit. Oh, that's a right. <laughs> uh, keep images in a root directory. 
until I work out how to make that not the case. Uh, why does it not add the deletions? And then Debian module, Debian kernel, and Debian packet. Do I have my aliases? No. I haven't got them set up yet. Commit, amend, no, edit. Get Kane, as I normally have the alias configured. And push origin. Those files haven't changed, so hopefully. Oh, it's just my UBK pushing too many times. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't upload them all again. Objects are still in the ref log. Should be smart enough to handle that. Yep, perfect. And we have our directory version here and our Ubuntu version. Here. What? Ah, the Docker file. Is that important? <laughs> uh, we'll find out. So, ah, uh, oh, but now it's a branch. Is that what it means? Yeah, let's just use this. I'm assuming that's a commit share for the branch. So let's go with that. And go. It's going to break, isn't it? Definitely going to break. It's got an IP address, but then that sits still during its own magic stuff, which is setting up networking. Um, where will my bit be? Here. Step eight. So I'm still not entirely sure how this is working. Because Ubuntu 1604, which we've chosen as the base image, and our user data is the user data, something that happens afterwards. So it's using the base system to do the install, partition the disks, and set up the networking, and then the cloud init stuff comes in. Now, our image contains an entire base system. So I'm going to have to find someone on engineering and work out what it's actually doing here. Because it's not just going to replace the disk with my image. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. Um, but then how would it then get the networking config and stuff in? I'm just curious how that works. I'm, I'm going to work. I'll find it out. Oh. I'm hoping it doesn't fail, and I'm hoping it works. And I will sit in silence until it does, because that's entertaining. My failure is much more entertaining. Let's pop over here. So what do we got? Da, da, da. Rick's going to look at StreamYard. Rain loves StreamYard. Let's just show random messages because it's cool. Da, 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 da. Uh, so back to Rick's 20 pieces of hardware. Six real pieces of hardware. One Pi, one NetTalk, four self-built mini ITX machines. And LXC containers and all of those. Cool. Uh -huh. Let's just go back and watch the magic thing. Oh, no way. Hmm. 
Hmm. Surely it didn't work. Doesn't look like it worked. Huh, I can't SSH onto it. It's definitely broken. Uh, let's get some debug gear. SSH isn't running. Okay, uh, I've never had to. I've never used out of band info. Yeah, you don't work. Go away. Uh, but we should be able to get. Still get onto this system. Yes, I have broken it. Serial over SSH, yes, give me thanks. Um, pretty sure I only have one key. Uh, give me key out. And try again. Maybe it does work then? No, that definitely doesn't. Okay, what about the out of band one? That's better. Oh. Drats. So well, it's definitely broken. Oh well. Not sure there's anything else I can do. There's no SSH on. Huh. Uh, you know, this was failing because of the key. I'm not giving up. Okay, got a plan. Let's spin up. Another, oh no, it's because this SSH isn't running. <laughs> so I can't even go through the internal IP address. Uh, run it. Call it, I've been to Nginx, bash. And SSH D is there. Some D fail for SSH is there. Uh, why is it not running SSH? Hmm. 
I mean, I'm kind of assuming right now that I haven't just broken the entire install. Uh, assuming those are the defaults. Uh, port 22. Public key authentication. Is there anything I can do? So let's try again. No. I can actually refuse this pretty quick. Would it time out if SSH wasn't running? Or is this something else? I got nothing. Why does the out of band console not work? <laughs> uh, I execute command, so I'll cipher. Let's see. No, it's actually the right. Impression. Did I execute a command? I feel like I should know this. Oh, you just, he's just back. All right, let's try. No, oh, okay. So I'm com completely out of ideas. So I'm going to shut this down. Oh, let's rescue OS. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't know what I've done. Can I use it a band now? Is that like yeah. destroy? So, do we have anything in chat? Uh, so Rain has asked if it's possible to see the system that it's putting up. Um, I, I don't think so. I'm not really sure. Uh, would be cool. I'm not sure what my next steps are actually right now. <laughs> so I'm going to have to speak to someone with more knowledge than me. And maybe someone who built a custom image before, uh, get them to join me. And I think we will try again either tomorrow or next week. I don't know where I went wrong. I mean, it could just be as simple as SSH wasn't started, but then I don't even understand. There's a disconnect um, from the image that I built with the Docker file, you know, adding that rootfs and then tweaking it and how we get to that stage based on the cloud in it specifying the repository and the commit shot, which I'm assuming is a commit shot. I don't even know that right now. Um, I'm assuming that 
was supposed to be a commit share. Uh, <laughs> but maybe not. Um, it could be there's no visibility from uh, the machine booting up and my image being replaced onto it somehow that I don't, I can't see through the GUI and maybe it could have been a, uh, just maybe if I was a bit more patient, maybe it takes time to pull the image from GitLab and provision it. And because I popped over to check for questions instead of watching the steps, I don't even, I'm assuming it completed. Um, I don't know if there was a way for me to get other information. So rather than me trying to spin that up again, I will solicit some help from someone who knows a little bit more about this than me, and we will try this again. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, if there's anything else that you want to see me cover with regards to packet, not building custom images, reach out to me on Twitter. Let me know if you have questions from today's stream that you would like answered. Let me know, and I will do my best to help. Anyway, thanks for watching.